Welcome back everyone, Patrick here. And moving on to the next question, we have to take the triangle that has vertices five, zero, two, one, and four and seven. And we have to verify that it's a right triangle in two different ways. So we've done a question like this before where if we have a right triangle, let me draw one out here. What does a right triangle mean as a review? Well, it just means that one of the angles is 90 degrees. So one way that we can do this, and we did this in a previous video, is we can take this line, find the slope of it. We could find the slope of this line. And then if there's an angle of 90 degrees between them, it means that both lines are perpendicular. And so it means that the slopes will be negative reciprocals of one another. So for example, if this slope is like negative four over nine, then this slope here would be nine over four, right? The negative reciprocal or vice versa. You would flip it and then change the sign. And then if two slopes are negative reciprocals of one another, if you find the slope of all three sides, if two of them are negative reciprocals of one another, then you know it's a right triangle. So that's one way to do it. That's one of the ways we're gonna do it here. Another way to do it is if you remember, if you have a right triangle, well, if we label this A, B, C, right? The length of this A, the length of this is B, the length of this is C, the hypotenuse is C. Then we know that by Pythagoras theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And so another way to verify it is we can find the length of this find the length of this, find the length of that, and then we can just make sure that this holds right here. That's another way to do it. It's a bit of a longer way versus just finding the slopes and then making sure that two of the slopes are negative reciprocals, but it's a way that you may be asked to do. So I'm gonna show you both ways here. So let's, um, not that a diagram in this case is super necessary, but I'll just make one anyway. So let's let this be A, B, and C. So actually all of this is gonna be in this first quadrant. So let me kind of redraw this with more room in the first quadrant. So we'll have five and zero, which is like over here. So this is gonna be point A, five and zero. And then we're going to have point B, 2 and 1, which would be like over here, right? If this is like 2, this is 1. This is not the um, necessarily to scale. It's just a rough drawing. And then we'll have point C, which is at 4 and 7. So 4 would be like over here. 7 would be like up here, a Y value of 7. So this is going to be C four and seven. So if we draw this out, we'd get something like that. It actually doesn't look too much like a right angle triangle. If you drew this on graph paper, if it was to scale, then it would look like a right angle triangle. And then it actually helps to make it to scale as much as you can, because then you can actually see, or at least um, predict where the right angle is going to be. So I'm predicting that it's probably going to be over here. If we drew this to scale, maybe this too would be like a little bit more um, shifted over and it would look more like a right angle. Potentially that could be as well. Anyway, we'll see. Nevertheless, we got to find the slopes of all the lines. So what we're going to do is that's the first method. We're gonna find the slopes of the lines and then see if two of them are negative reciprocals of each other, two of them are perpendicular. And actually, as I mentioned before, it maybe helps to do a, a to scale diagram because then you don't have to find all three slopes. You could just find two because remember only two of them have to be perpendicular to get that right angle. And then you don't have to find the third slope. And so from here, I'm predicting that angle B is gonna be the right angle. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the slope of AB 
and then BC first, and hopefully they'll be negative reciprocals of one another, but that's why making a scale diagram helps, because then you could see for sure where that right angle is gonna be. Okay, so either way, let's find the slope of AB. So we got five and zero, which is point A, and then we got two and one for B. So I'm gonna let this be X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So we'll have, um, remember slope is what? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So we'll have one Y2 minus Y1, which is zero, over two X2 minus X1, like that. So this would end up being one over negative three, which is negative one over three, like that. So that's the slope of AB negative one over three. Now let's find the slope of BC. So B, which is two and one, we already have that. And then C is four and seven. So I'll let this be X1, Y1. So we'll have Y2, one minus Y1, which is seven over X2, two minus X1, which is four negative six over negative two, which gives us positive three. And as expected, notice that these are negative reciprocals of one another, right? The three is like over one, three and three over one are the same thing. So if we Take the reciprocal of three over one, it would be one over three. And then because this was a positive, if we switch the sign, we'd have a negative. So because the slope of AB is perpendicular to BC, it means that angle B we showed is equal to 90 degrees, or it's a right angle. And so we verify that it's a right angle triangle. We don't even have to find the slope of AC anymore. Right, you can if you want. Uh, that would be what? It would be seven over negative one, right? Seven minus zero over four minus five, which gives you negative seven. But again, that wouldn't have any relation to these slopes because the right angle is over here. So we only need the slope of AB and BC, and we show that they're negative reciprocals of one another. So angle B, one of the angles is 90 degrees of the triangle, so it's a right angle triangle. So that's one way to verify it. Now the longer way to verify it is we'd have to find the length of all three sides. So just as a review, length formula between two points, x1, y1, x2, y2, would be x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And then you would be square rooting that whole expression. So let's go through all three lengths. So let's start off with length uh, AB. So we got two and one, five and zero. Those are the points. So I'm gonna let this be x1, y1, x2, y2. So we'd have the square root of x2, five, minus x1, which is two squared, y2, zero, minus y1, one. That's gonna be squared like that. So from here, we'd have the square root of three to the power two plus negative one to the power two, which would give us nine plus one which would give us square root of 10. And I'm gonna keep it as an exact value. Okay, I'm not gonna get the decimal because working with exact values is actually nice in this case because with the Pythagoras theorem, we're gonna be squaring these anyway. And then the square root of something squared is just gonna be that value under the square root. So 
I'll write the lengths over here. So the length of AB is square root of 10. So that's one of the sides. Now, the next one, let's do BC. And we're working with uh, two and one, four and seven. So x1, y1, x2, y2. So we'd have four minus two, that's gonna be squared. Y2 minus y1, that's gonna be squared like that. So from here, we'd have two squared plus six squared. So we'd have four plus 36 which is the square root of 40. Okay, that's the length of BC. So BC, square root of 40. And then finally, let's find the length of uh, AC. The two points we're using are five and zero, four and seven, x1, y1, x2, y2, so we'll have x2 minus x1, 4 minus 5 squared, plus y2 minus y1 squared, negative 1 squared plus 7 squared, which gives us 1 plus 49, which gives us 50, square root of 50. That's the length of uh, AC. Now, we know, because we know that B is the right angle from doing the work before, we know that AC is gonna be the hypotenuse of the triangle. But let's say that we didn't know that angle B is gonna be the right angle, so the opposite side is the hypotenuse. You could tell from the three lengths, the hypotenuse is always the longest length. The hypotenuse is always the longest length. So from these three lengths, we could tell AC is gonna be the hypotenuse, right? The square root of 50 is greater than the square root of 40 and greater than the square root of 10. Okay, so if we didn't do this, we could just tell that AC would be the, um, AC would be the hypotenuse. So just to kind of show you this, we have A, C, and then we have B over here. Right? If we took that and put it over here where B is this right angle, so we could tell, again, from this, AC would be the hypotenuse. So if you wanted to make like a rough drawing here on the side with these three lengths, we'd have the square root of 50 as the length, square root of 10, or no, yeah, AB is square root of 10, BC is square root of 40, like that. And it doesn't matter if this was like, uh, if we put the A over here, the B has to be here. The A could be here, the C can be up there, and then we would just switch these, right? We could just switch these two lengths, it doesn't matter. Now, from here, just remember, we have A, B, C, if we label the lengths like that, it'd be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But since we're using actual letters here, what we can say is the length of ab squared plus the length of bc squared has to equal the length of ac squared, like that. So what we have to do here is just plug everything in. So ab is the square root of 10 bc is the square root of 40, and then ac is the square root of 50. And we just have to work with both of these sides, and then at the end we should get the left side equaling the right side, and then we verify it. So notice that square root of 10 squared is just 10, square root of 40 squared is just 40, square root of 50 squared is just 50. And so we'd end up with 50 equaling 50, and so because we got over here, we verified that it's a right angle triangle because the Pythagoras theorem holds. If you got to this point and this side doesn't equal this side, then you did something wrong with your algebra. Then probably one of the lengths was done wrong.
the algebra was done wrong for it. Right? But if you got the correct lengths, plug them in here, and as I mentioned, because it's nice to keep them as exact values because you're going to be squaring them anyway. They're not always going to be exact values, so sometimes you'll get like maybe 4 over here. Then you'll have 4 squared. This would be 16. But because it's the square root, right, just in general, the square root of something squared is just that thing that's under the square root. Square root of 10 squared, 10. Square root of 40 squared, four, uh, 40. Square root of 50 squared is 50. Right? And we end up showing that left side equals right side. So that's how you could verify that it's a right angle triangle using the Pythagoras theorem.